Welcome, my friends. The topic this time is about the promise of heaven. The best is yet to come. Can you imagine a perfect world, a place where there is no more hunger, sickness, pain, or dying? Tonight, we are going to study about heaven. But before we start, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we ask that you forgive us from our sins. Be merciful to us, Lord. Give us wisdom and understanding to understand your word, that your word may change our lives. Thank you for heaven. Help us to stay focused on the benefits of your grace and share it with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can you imagine a perfect world? A place where there is no hunger, sickness, pain, or dying? Tonight, today, we are going to try to grasp an understanding of what heaven is like. It's something that is beyond our comprehension or imagination. The Apostle Paul tells us, I has not seen or ear have heard nor have entered into the heart of men the things which God has prepared for those who love him. 1 Corinthians 2, 9. We can't comprehend heaven unless we have been there. But can we at least catch a glimpse of what it is we like? Uh, for Paul continues, But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. 1 Corinthians 2.10 So what the Bible reveals to us about heaven is crystal clear. Crystal clear. In fact, do you know that the Bible is full of details about heaven? God wants us to know that heaven is like what heaven is like. So we will determine to be there. We will be determined to be there. There will be so many things to enjoy, including association with angels, companionship with our loving God and Savior, learning and growing throughout all eternity. God wants us to look forward to these things. He wants us to be encouraged to give our hearts in surrender and service to our Creator. So in the Bible, God has given us a reliable description of what has, he has in store for us. Peter describes it in this way in 2 Peter 1.19. We have a prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place. Until that dawn and the morning star rises in your hearts. It may surprise you that God in his word has revealed where heaven is will be what heaven will be like where its capital will be what people will do there what people will be like there what the saved will live uh, where the saved will live what the capital city will look like wow let's take god's own word the bible and discover a very real future that god has prepared for his children in the last book of the bible the revelation god himself revealed to John, a picture of the future. Listen to what John saw in Revelation 21. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. You see, Few scenes present such happiness and beauty as that of a bride preparing for her wedding day. That's how special this place called heaven will be. And John is not the only one who saw this heavenly home. Many of God's prophets throughout the ages have known about it. Acts 3, 20 and 21. And that he may send Jesus Christ, who was preached also to you before, whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things which God has spoken by his mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Acts 3, 20, 21. What is God going to restore? This verse describes the restoration of all things. God is going to restore everything that Adam and Eve lost. He is going to restore this universe back to its condition before the blight of sin. The earth came from the hands of the Creator in splendor and perfection. Beautiful beyond description, God Himself had designed and decorated Adam and Eve's paradise home, the Garden of Eden. God had given them dominion over the earth 
we had they were had perfect health love happiness joy and face-to-face -face fellowship with god everything was peace and harmony they would never get sick or die as long as they chose to obey god's commandments and his instructions were clear do not eat of the forbidden tree in the garden of eden or you will die but adam and eve chose to eat from that tree they listened to the voice of a selfish power hungry rebel angel named satan instead of obeying the warnings of a loving caring creator god for the first time in their lives they felt guilty ashamed and afraid by their disobedience they lost everything their garden home their dominion of the earth their access to the tree of life and their face-to-face -face communion with god our perfect world became withered by sin this earth became a place of sorrow and suffering of disease and death no longer masters adam and eve became slaves to sin and self paul said in romans 6 16 do you not know that whom you present yourselves slaves to obey are the ones slaves whom you obey but the creator god loved his children too much to leave them in the misery of their own decisions he knew they had been deceived he wanted to give them another chance at the gates of the garden of eden god promised adam and eve that one day his son the seed of the woman would come and die for them so they could be restored to the family of god and have eternal life he said to the deceiver and i will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel genesis 3 15. but generations passed and sin multiplied on the earth mankind almost forgot god and his promise people became corrupt and immoral genesis 6 5 says then the lord saw that the wickedness of the man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually so it became finally necessarily finally necessary for god to destroy the wickedness of the world by a great flood in order to preserve life on earth only eight people in noah's righteous family survived after that flood it wasn't very many generations before the world became corrupt and godless again in order to preserve on earth the truth of a coming redeemer god called abraham and his family out of the luxurious but idolaters, idolatrous Ur of the Chaldeans, the Lord said to Abraham, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. Genesis 12, 1 and 2. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. Amazingly enough, Abraham was willing to leave the luxury of his Chaldean home to follow God's direction. He didn't know where he was going, but he did have a glimpse by faith of what God had in store for him. Hebrews 11, 9 and 10. By faith, he dwelt in the land of promise in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Hebrews 11, 9 and 10. Abraham wasn't that concerned about his earthly inheritance because he believed God's promise to restore all things, everything Adam and Eve lost to him and his children. Like Abraham, righteous men and women in all ages have looked forward to that restoration of all things. Hebrews chapter 11 mentions many of them by name. Abraham, Enoch, Noah, Abel, Isaac, Rahab, David, Nay, Samuel are just a few of the men and women of faith who believed God's promises and were willing to wait expectantly until that time. Notice what the Bible says about these heroes of faith. This Hebrews 11, 13, 16. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off were assured of them, embraced them, but now they desired a, desire a better that is a heavenly 
country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He has prepared a city for them. Hebrews 11, 13, and 16. The prophet Isaiah gives us a thrilling description of the restoration God has in mind. Isaiah 65, 17. For behold, I create a new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered or come to mind. Violence shall be no longer heard in your land, neither wasting nor destruction within your borders, but you shall call your walls salvation and your gates praise. Isaiah 60, 18. Just think, no violence there, just peace and harmony. Isn't that a wonderful thing about? No need to find weapons to defend and protect ourselves. No rapists, no thieves. It won't be, won't, and won't it be a wonderful walk? To walk those streets of gold and not worry about being attacked or robbed. But Isaiah tells us more. Isaiah 11, 6. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat. The child shall lead them, Isaiah 11, 6. Not only will the world around us be restored to its original perfection, but we too will have restored health and healthy bodies. Listen to Isaiah 33. Isaiah prophet says about the land, Isaiah 33, 24, And the inhabitants shall not say, I am sick. No more heart attacks, no more cancer, no more allergy, just perfect health for all eternity. Isn't that great news, my friend? Isaiah 35, 5 says, Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Can you imagine that scene? When an incredible day that will be for those who are blind or deaf. Deaf to see the face of Jesus and to hear His voice speaking to them personally. There will be a lot of happy people in heaven. And those who were blind and deaf won't be alone in their joy on that day. Isaiah 35, 6, Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the dumb sing. No more crutches, no more wheelchairs. Everyone will have restored bodies, restored to the original perfection, restored to how God intended us to function and live. What a happy day that will be. But there's even more good news. In Isaiah 35, 1, the weird wilderness and the wasteland shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as a rose. What a beautiful place the earth will be. Isaiah 65, 21 says, They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree, so shall the days of my people and my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. Isaiah 65, 21 to 22. It certainly sounds like heaven will be a real place with real people doing real things. Doesn't it? It will be. In fact, we will know and recognize others and they will know us. Isaiah 66, 22. For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, saith the Lord. So shall your descendants and your name shall remain. Uh, your name remain. Isaiah 66, 22. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, all flesh shall come and worship me, says the Lord. Isaiah 66, 23. All of heaven will be filled with joy and rejoicing. And the ransomed, Isaiah 35, 10, And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing, with everlasting joy on their heads. They shall be obtained, and shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away, Isaiah 35, 10. Imagine, no more discouragement or depression only joy and happiness and contentment. It will be a joy, wonderful, joyful celebration as the saved come each Sabbath to the holy city to praise, worship, and have fellowship. Best of all, Jesus will be there in person to worship and fellowship with the God who loved us, who emptied himself, and heaven's treasure to save us will be spending time with us just like he did with Adam and Eve so long ago. Perfect restoration. Perhaps you remember of some of the wonderful promises Jesus gave to encourage his disciples and the disciples of age, all ages just before he returned to heaven. John 14, 1-3 Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, 
believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you will be. Also, John 14, 1, 2, 3. Jesus said that he is building us a mansion. I'm sure I will enjoy what he has planned for each one of us. But the Bible also says that we will also build houses. Perhaps that mansions Jesus is building are in the New Jerusalem, which John saw in his vision coming down from heaven and being relocated here on earth. But we will also have a chance to build our own country homes. Each weekend we will make our way to the New Jerusalem, the capital of the New Earth, and use our mansion in the city. The Bible picture of heaven is clear. Earth, this planet, once lost in rebellion, will become the capital of the whole universe. The throne of God will be here. And this same earth is to be the inheritance of the saved. Jesus said, Matthew 5, 5, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Not only will earth be restored to its original perfection, it will even be better. God's, because God and his people will dwell together here for all eternity. No wonder Jesus told his disciples to pray for this day to come. Matthew 6, 10, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let's consider in more detail the magnificent city God John saw in the, in the vision. It seems that the prophet had a hard time finding words to express the grandeur of that holy city. It just seemed too fabulous to be true. In Revelation 21, 1 to 3, Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming ah, down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. Revelation 21, 1 to 3. Revelation 21, 11 says, Her light was like a most precious stone, like jasper stone, clear as a crystal. Revelation 21, 11. Then he measured the wall, 144 cubits or 66 meters. The 12 gates were 12 pearls. Revelation 21, 17 to 21. The city had a great and high wall and names written on them, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. The street of the city was pure gold, like transparent glass. The city had no need of sun or moon to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is its light. Revelation 22, 12, 21 to 23. A pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. On either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. There shall be no night there. Yes, the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the capital, New Jerusalem. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. Revelation 22, 3. And the best part is that is what won't happen in heaven and God Revelation 21 4 and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes there shall be no more death no more sorrow no more crying there shall be no more pain for the former things have passed away John gives the exact details as to the size of the city the city is laid out as a square its length is as great as its breadth. And he, the angel, measured the city with a reed, 12,000 furlongs, or 1,500 miles, or 2,400 kilometers. Revelation 21, 16. Ancient cities were measured by the outside walls. So the city would be approximately 375 miles, or 600 kilometers on each side. How many people could fit housed in a city of this size? One mathematician had calculated that Jerusalem could house 2 billion people. In other words, there would be room for everyone who wants to be there. <clears throat> but what will keep us busy in such a wonderful place? It sounds like 
We did a lot of active things as build our country dream home or plant our own gardens. Jesus, the creator, will be there to open us the mysteries of creation. We will always be learning new things. We will be able to travel anytime we wish. We will have time for our friends and loved ones. And each Sabbath, we will be praising God and singing with angels and Jesus, our special time to fellowship with our Lord. Well, you may ask, how can we be certain that we will be there? The answer is simple. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Galatians 6, 29. In other words, if you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, the promise God gave to Abraham will be given also to you. In our study of the Bible, we have seen for the first three chapters of the first book, Genesis, tell how God created the world and gave his paradise home to Abraham, to Adam and Eve, but they lost it all. The last three chapters of the last book of the Bible, Revelation, tell how God will restore Adam and Eve lost. What Adam and Eve lost, God has planned for us a beautiful and wonderful future. A number of years ago, a boat transporting ship became lost in the fog in the North Sea. The boat drifted aimlessly for three days. The ship aboard the boat refused to eat the stale hay. They wandered to the side of the ship and began to bleed. They continued to ba and ba and ba. The captain and deck hands were utterly amazed. They wondered why. Soon the fog lifted. The boat was a few yards off the Scottish coast. The ship has smelled the freshly mown hay lying in beautiful Scottish fields. They refused to eat the day's old stale hay their owners tried to feed them. When we get a smell of heaven, we adjust our priorities. When we get a smell of eternity, everything else fits into place. We long for another land. We want to be there on eternity's shore. Are you homesick for heaven? Do you want to be there? Is the desire of your heart to live with Christ in glory forever? Would you like to say, yes, Lord, I want to be there with you. I long to be with you forever and ever and ever. God gives you the invitation, my friend. The Spirit and the Bride says, Come, Revelation 22, 17. Don't put it off, my friend. You can be part of God's fabulous tomorrow. Invite Him to your heart and heaven will be your home. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you for heaven. Thank you for the promises in the Bible. Thank you for salvation, for forgiving us from all our sins. Thank you for creation. Thank you for salvation, redemption, and for promising us heaven. We ask that you forgive us from our sins. Help us to be faithful, Lord, and help us to find other people who want to be saved. Thank you for hearing us in our prayers. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen.